What if we want to find the reference of the object to which the script itself is assigned? In this case, for example, we have this script in this object. How we can access this object? We could use any of the methods we saw in the previous videos, for example, define a public reference and assign the reference manually, or find it using a tag. But in this case, as the object we want to access is the same one that has the script assigned to it, the solution is trivial. When we create a new script in Unity, we're going to see this part up here, colon monobehavior. This is telling us that this class we are defining is inheriting from monobehavior. Inheritance in programming is something a little advanced, we're not going to see it here, but basically it's telling us that this class we are defining deep inside is a monobehavior, but with some specific changes. So our new class will have many things that are already defined in monobehavior. For example, the common functions like start, update, fixed update, destroy, or instantiate. If we go to the Unity documentation, we can find a lot of information about the monobehavior class. For example, the fact that it's defined in the Unity engine namespace. This line here, if it's not defined, Unity doesn't know the word monobehavior and gives us an error. Another thing is that monobehavior inherits from a class called behavior. So our script is inheriting from monobehavior, which is inheriting from behavior. This is the documentation for that class and notice that it inherits from the component class, which finally inherits from the object class. This would be the base class, the one with the highest hierarchy. So in the documentation, we can see the properties that are defined in monobehavior. Notice that we have some known functions like onTriggerEnter, here the description, when a game object collides with another game object, Unity calls on trigger enter. When that happens and all the conditions are met. Here in the corner, I leave you a video where we analyze the on trigger enter function. And we also have the inherit members from behavior and component. Members are variables, objects, and functions. Notice that here we have the tag variable and we also have this game object variable. The first letter with lowercase. This variable is probably familiar to you. Notice the description. The game object this component is attached to. A component is always attached to a game object. So, game object with the first letter in lowercase is a variable that is in all monobehaviors and refers to the game object to which that monobehavior is assigned. All this complicated explanation is just to say that we can easily access the game object to which the script itself is assigned since we always have the game object field that is going to be pointing to that object. I'm going to assign the value of game object to the field that we defined to follow the form that we were doing in the other videos. This is totally unnecessary because if we already have the game object variable, we don't need this other variable. But still, let's enter the play mode and here we see that the object to find variable has the reference of this game object, which is the same that has a script assigned. Another variable that all the mono behaviors have is transform, the first letter in lowercase. This field is going to refer to the transform component of the game object this monobehavior is assigned to. Because the components are always assigned to a game object and the game objects always have a transform component. So we can access the transform itself directly with this word. To show that, we will print the position of the transform component. That is, in the console we should see this vector here. Enter the play mode and here we have this vector with some rounding differences, but it's the same one we have here. 